Commercial mushroom farming is one of the most technologically advanced and sophisticated agricultural industries in the world. And although they are readily available in every supermarket throughout the year, it is a misconception to think that they are easy to grow. In fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Different strains of mushrooms require different types of compost, also known as substrate. And preparing this selective compost is the most challenging part of the mushroom growing process. The basic compost ingredients are water, straw, chicken litter, and finally gypsum. These ingredients are combined in three distinct steps to form the compost. In the pre-wet process, the straw is thoroughly soaked for a predetermined time. The bales are then sprayed with water and eventually broken up. During the pre-mix, the chicken manure and gypsum are mixed into the straw and loaded into a large concrete bunker. As the ingredients interact with each other, the compost starts to heat up, the temperatures reaching as high as 70 degrees Celsius. During the next four to seven days, the compost is taken out and mixed as required. After just seven days, those huge bales of straw are converted into a soft brown compost. Once the compost is ready, it is transferred by a conveyor system for pasteurization which lasts for six days. This phase has two purposes, pasteurization and conditioning, which are achieved through strict climate control and ventilation. It is conducted under carefully controlled conditions in specifically designed tunnels with aerated plenum floors. Mushroom seeds, known as spawn or mycelium, are grown on sterilized grain and mixed into the compost. The spawn compost is placed back into the tunnels for incubation. The mushroom mycelium starts growing into the compost. After about 15 to 19 days, the compost is completely colonized by the mushroom mycelium. The white particles shown are the mushroom mycelium. After this process, the colonized compost is transferred into the growing tunnels and mushroom growing can begin. A mixture of black peat and sugar beet lime is added to the compost. It will form the top part of the casing. This is called the casing layer. The casing layer protects the compost from drying out and as the pinheads grow, they absorb the water and microflora from the surrounding peat and compost. Once the pinhead is greater than 5 mm in diameter, the watering stops. This allows the casing layer to act as a water reservoir, supplying the mushrooms with moisture during the growth phase. After 9 to 11 days, the crop is tricked into fruiting with a simulated season change. The mycelium reacts to the seasonal change by reproducing. Sophisticated climate control units allow the growers to manipulate the environment to get the results they want. Fruiting occurs in breaks or flushes beginning about 17 days after casing and continues at weekly intervals. As mushrooms are extremely delicate and easily bruised, they are picked by hand. This makes the South African mushroom industry a huge job creator. All mushrooms are individually picked and are graded as they are harvested and placed directly into the store packaging or punnets. After harvesting, the mushrooms are cooled as soon as possible. They are hand sorted, weighed and prepared for distribution. We grow mushrooms. We sell mushrooms. We cook mushrooms. We eat mushrooms. We love mushrooms. May your soils be rich and your spores be many.